Who are the big players? In the currency market? Yeah. The big players will be people who have to transact billions, if not tens of billions of dollars. And so you can imagine that'll be pension funds who have overseas investments, insurance companies, um, asset managers, big asset managers like Fidelity, um, central banks themselves. How does a central bank intervene? Well, yes, first it can intervene in, this, in, 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 the, in, the, in the market to maintain domestic currency in a particular bank, but each central bank also can, has, holds reserves. They don't just hold their own currency, they hold lots of other currencies. A lot of central banks have mandates that each reserve can only be a certain percentage of the total. So then if the value of a particular reserve goes into excess for whatever for currency fluctuations, then they have to reduce it. And so you have all these big players, what's called real money. People are doing physical transaction of cash, not just speculators who are sitting there on the screen and doing this computer calculation, but people who are really physically transacting cash. And so those are the big players that are moving money across borders. So the question that I have here is how can I compete with the big banks? But I guess are you competing? Do you want to compete? It's a very good question. Are you competing? Um, so a statement is made about the futures and the FX markets, and people tend to say that's not true for the equity markets. And they say it's a zero-sum game. So within the equity space, people say it's not a zero-sum game because if I buy this share in the company, the company's value somehow increases and creates value for me. Whereas in the future, the only way to make money is because a future, as it's novated from the exchange when I purchase it, versus the seller, I have some seller behind me I don't know about because it's all kept anonymous, but as I make money, the other guy has to lose money. And so the same thing to a certain extent is true for the FX markets. So then the question here is, if it's a zero-sum game, by the very definition of zero-sum game, I'm competing with somebody else. Now, Let's look at the word game. Game actually implies that we all have the same objective. So when you play Monopoly, everybody's got the, well, there's objective to accumulate all the money, all the hotels, and make everybody else bust. But within the world of FX, not everybody has the same objective. So as we said, central banks have an objective of maintaining, due to law and mandate, a certain percentage of the reserves and certain. They don't care about the fluctuation of the currency. And a classic example is, uh, the Swiss National Bank that wants to keep the level of the franc at a certain level, it doesn't care about fluctuations. It'll just print francs and buy and sell the stuff and ultimately it'll post a loss, it'll post a gain, but to them that's not necessarily as important. It has secondary political uh, resonances in Switzerland, but they have a different money, a different goal to, to, um, to follow. Or for instance, if you have a corporate that tries to hedge cash flows 12 months out, will they be concerned about short-term fluctuations? So because people have different objectives and different time frames, it can be that one such objective and time frame will provide profit opportunity over the shorter time frame. And so it's this, what you'd call heterogeneous kind of mix of agents, everybody wanting different outcomes, that allows you to find a niche that at some point in time is profitable, but for somebody else is profitable as well because he's got a completely different outlook or has to meet completely different objectives. PNL is not necessarily the only thing that people look at when they transact in the markets.